Hi traders, welcome to the most comprehensive trading view guide on the internet. My name is Matthew from Zen and the Art of Trading. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you see on your chart from top left down to bottom right. I'm going to show you how to navigate the interface like a professional trader. And we're going to do a deep dive on every interface option on the TradingView platform. So strap in. This is going to be a long video. I'll provide timestamps in the description if you want to jump ahead to a certain section. So check that out if you need to. Otherwise, let's get started. But first of all, if you're unfamiliar with TradingView, TradingView is a cloud-based charting platform and a social trading platform. So that means that it runs in your browser. You don't have to download anything to access it. Just go to tradingview.com. You can load any tradable market in the world from crypto to stocks to Forex, futures, commodities, you name it. If it can be traded, it's on the TradingView platform. TradingView is also referred to as a social trading platform, and that's because it has social elements. So if I go to ideas here, we'll get a list of all the different ideas posted by other traders on the platform. There's also a script section which lists all the scripts and strategies created by TradingView's users. And over here on the right, there is a public chat rooms that you can uh, discuss trading with traders all around the world. So it's kind of like a social media platform, a charting platform, a scripting platform, and a backtesting platform all wrapped up into one service. So I'm a huge fan of TradingView. If you haven't used it, I highly recommend you check it out. I know you're going to love it. It really takes trading and charting into the modern age of cloud-based apps. They also have a mobile app if you want to download that and check that out on your phone or your tablet. Cloud-based means that it runs in your browser. You don't need to download anything. You don't need to leave the system running in order for your alerts to trigger or your scripts and indicators to run. Once you set alerts on the TradingView platform, they continue to run 24-7, 365 days a year on the TradingView servers. And you can access a lot of the TradingView functionality for free. You don't even need to pay any money unless you want extra features. So if you don't have an account, there'll be a link in the video description to sign up. And without any further ado, let's get into the video guide. So here we are on a blank TradingView chart layout. Now, if you've never used TradingView before, this can all look a bit overwhelming, but I'll walk you through each of the interface features in this video. And by the end of this video, you'll have a firm understanding of how TradingView works. So here I am on a blank chart layout. You can access your chart layouts up here on this little drop down box here. If you click load chart layout, here's a bunch of chart layouts I've created. Depending on your trading view plan, you will have a limited amount of chart layouts you can create. But this is where you load existing chart layouts, create new chart layouts, make a duplicate copy of your current chart layout, rename the chart layout that you're using currently. And you can even turn sharing on or off so that you can share your chart with friends or colleagues other traders that you work with. Now, I would recommend leaving auto save on. This means that any changes you make to your chart will be saved every five minutes. That's a good idea to leave that on. So that's all of our chart layout options. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to go over all of the interface features from the top left down to the bottom right. So there's a lot to cover. This is gonna be a long video, but I'll leave timestamps in the video description. So let's get started. The first button we have in our top left is our settings menu. So this is for general chart settings. And here you can access your chart layouts from this top uh, drop down box as well as up here. And you have your auto save options, sharing options, and your rename, make a copy. You can even export your chart data here too. So if I wanted to export this data into a CSV file, into a spreadsheet file, I could do so here, click export, and I'll get a file saved to my computer. So there's all kinds of reasons why you might want this, such as external backtesting programs and that sort of thing, but we won't go into that in this video because that's outside of the scope of what I have to teach you today. But if you need to export your chart data, that's how you do it. Next up, we have our profile settings. So here you can go to your TradingView profile. You can change your profile settings and you can access your account and billing information all from this uh, settings menu. So next up, we have the help center. So if you click on this, you will get access to all of the various um, categories that you need help with. And there's a lot of information here. This is a great resource for beginners to TradingView's platform. And they cover everything here, including an FAQ section. 
Uh, there's a list of keyboard shortcuts, which we'll go over later in this video. You can also request features from this menu. And if I scroll up to the top, we have this button up the top right, My Support Tickets. If you click on this, there'll be a list of support tickets. These are all my support tickets. And the TradingView team have resolved every single one of these. And they've done so quickly and they've always been friendly. So if you ever run into any trouble with the TradingView platform, just lodge a ticket and they will get around to you as quickly as they can. And they are always extremely helpful. That's one of my favorite things about TradingView. So we're not gonna go over all of these uh, categories of issues here, but there's a lot of articles, a lot of information here. So this is the first place you should go if you run into any trouble with the platform. So next up, we have the refer a friend. If you click on this, uh, you get a link here that you can share to your audience if you have a social media presence or just to friends and other traders that you want to tell about TradingView. And if they sign up and upgrade to a paid plan, then you both get up to $30 worth of coins added to your accounts. And you can use these coins to purchase subscriptions or renew existing subscriptions. And you can even use them to donate money to stream authors, which is pretty cool. Moving on, we have the what's new section. So if we click on this, and if we scroll down, here is a list of the various changes that have been made to the TradingView platform. So all of these links go to the blog, the official TradingView blog, where they go into more information about the changes and they are constantly updating and upgrading the platform. And that's probably my second favorite thing about TradingView. They have fantastic support and they also have a very active development team that is constantly improving the platform and responding to user suggestions and feedback. So moving on, we have home. That'll just take you to the home page. We have more which will list the various trading ideas that are published by other traders, uh, various market information and indicator scripts, which we'll go over later in the video. Next up, we have the dark color theme toggle. If you toggle this off, then the charts turn bright white like this. So unless you are mostly using your charts during the day, I'd recommend leaving this on because it's much better on your eyes. Next up, we have the drawings panel toggle. You can turn the drawing panel sidebar on or off here which is helpful if you don't use it very often or if you have your uh, drawing tool favorites set up, such as these star icons next to all of these drawing tools. And we'll go over that later in the video as well. Next up, we have the keyboard shortcuts. Now this is fantastic. This is, a, this is something that I'm constantly learning new things about myself. There are so many key binds and, and keyboard shortcuts on the platform that it's quite overwhelming and impossible to memorize them all. But if you go through the list of keyboard binds here, you're guaranteed to find a few that will dramatically improve your workflow and speed up your efficiency when it comes to chart analysis and just navigating the charting platform. So I'm not going to go over all of these here. I'll leave that up to you, but there is a lot of information here, a lot of shortcuts, including the Pine Editor shortcuts. Now the Pine Editor is a whole new bag of worms and I'll only be covering the complete basics of the Pine Editor because that is an entire subject of its own. I've created an entire course on this called the Pine Script Mastery Course, where I go into great information, great detail about how to use the Pine Editor and how to create your own scripts. And I have several hours of content on the Pine Editor. So we're not going to be going into that in this video, but I will give you a brief overview of how it works and what it looks like and what you can achieve with it. So that's it for the settings menu. It's a lot of information here. And you should be able to access everything you need to regarding the charting platform settings and support network and all of that from this menu up here. So let's move on to the next box on our interface, which is the ticker box. So here is where you write in the market you want to load on your charts. So for example, if I wanted to see what the Australian dollar was priced against the US dollar, I just write in AUD USD and I'll get a list of all the various exchanges that TradingView's data allows me to load. And if you just click on any of these, it will load the price data onto your chart. So it's very easy to access markets through the TradingView platform. Now you can also load markets simply by typing in to the TradingView platform itself. If you don't select anything, just click on your chart and start typing, let's say Tesla. We can load the Tesla chart straight from that interface and it couldn't be easier. If we want to load Apple again, AAPL, click on the top option. And there we have it. So it's very easy to load market data into TradingView. Next up, we have our time frame settings. So if you click on this little drop down box, you'll get a list of all the various time frames that TradingView allows you to load, all the way down to the seconds. So you can load a one second chart if you're an extreme scalper, 
or you can go all the way up to the monthly chart if you wanted to and see how things look on the higher time frames. You can even load your own time frames here by just typing. So if you start typing a number, then this will bring up the change interval box and you can use letters to specify what time frame you want to load. So if I wanted every bar on my chart to be a six day time frame, I can just write 6D. If I press enter, every bar on my chart is now six days of price action. If I wanted to load six months, I could type 6M. Now every bar on my platform is a six month period. Now this looks a lot like Bitcoin in uh, 2018, 2017. And you can get some really interesting perspectives from the TradingView timeframe functionality. And again, if I wanted to go to the one second chart, I can just type 1S and we're back on the one second chart. So you can favorite the timeframes that you trade the most and that will add them to this little list here. So at the end here, we have the last loaded timeframe and here we have my favorite timeframes. So the 50 minute chart, one hour, four hour, daily and weekly. So those are your time frame options and you can load any time frame you want. If I wanted to load a three hour time frame, just type 3H and every bar will be a three hour time frame. So there's a lot of flexibility with your trading view time frames. Moving on, we have the candles. So this will allow you to change what kind of candles your price action is represented as. So if you wanted to load a bar chart, just click bars. If you wanted to load hollow candles, click hollow and so on. There's quite a few options here. You could even load hike in ashy which is like an average, and this is using price averages. This can be really helpful for following the trend and momentum in price action. And there's some really great options here. You can go to a line chart and they even have range bar charts. So you can see what price ranges are being traded in. So here we have a 50 tick range. So if you measure out the size of the candle, you can see it's around 50 ticks there. Every bar on this chart is exactly 50 ticks or 50 points. And as soon as that 50 point range is broken, a new bar opens on the chart. So this is a unique way of analyzing price action. And there's some great range bar trading strategies out there. So those are your bar options and you have quite a few. I'm not going to go over all of them in this video. Or this video will never end, but there are a lot of options here. So come here and play around with these when you get time. And it's worth mentioning that some of these options will not be available to you if you're on a free account. A lot of these advanced candlestick options are only available for premium subscribers. So let's go back to candle charts and move on to the next interface option, which is compare or add symbol. So right now we're on the Apple chart. If I click this little plus sign, we can add a symbol, which will draw over the top of this chart here. So if I wanted to draw the S&P 500, for example, I can click that and now I'm getting an overlay of the S&P 500 as a line chart. So if I click on this, come to style, we could change this to candles as well. It can get a bit confusing having two candlestick uh, price data drawn to your chart. So that's why it comes on by default as a line chart, but you can change this in the style menu, but I'm just showing you that that is possible. We could go to area or uh, baseline. So I'll remove that for now. And if we click on this again and go to compare, there's a bunch of options here. So if we wanted to compare Apple stock price to the NASDAQ, just click on that. And now we're automatically comparing the difference in price magnitudes between these two. So these are all advanced options. We're not gonna go into how to use these in this video, uh, but that's how you can access other markets on your trading chart and have multiple sources of price data on the one chart. So let's remove that and let's move on to the indicators and strategies dialog box. So this box here will allow you to select built-in indicators and strategies. So for example, we could come down here and find the relative strength index, the RSI indicator. Click on that. And now we have an RSI. If you want to load a stochastic, come down, look for stochastic, click on that. Now we have an RSI and stochastic indicator drawing onto our chart. And you can also, of course, type in here. So I could type in exponential moving average, click on that. And now I have a moving average on my chart and you can even merge these indicators. So if you click on this little uh, three dotted button here, you can go to move to and you can say existing pane above and that will merge these two indicators into each other. Or I could even uh, move it onto the actual chart itself. So that's what this little, uh, these little ellipses do. And this is useful for something like drawing your ATR indicator directly onto your chart, which I'll show you how to do really quickly. Now if we put on the ATR, get rid of the RSI and I move this up twice. 
now we have the ATR on our chart in the top left here, as you can see here. And if I open up the style menu and I change this transparency to 100%, we're now not drawing the line, but we're still getting that data value in the corner. So that's a really helpful uh, use case for this little three dotted button. So this is one of the more powerful functionality features of TradingView's platform is just how easy it is to add uh, indicators onto your price action chart. And of course, there is a wealth of public scripts that have been written by the trading community that do all kinds of things that you won't see in your typical inbuilt indicators or existing popular indicators. And of course, using the Pine Editor, you can write your own scripts. So here's a list of all the scripts that I've been working on over the past couple of years. And if I just add on one of these, let's add on my latest version of the ultimate pullback indicator. If I click that, you can see this is drawing price signals straight onto my chart. And so there are a lot of custom indicators out there that you can load onto your chart and they're extremely powerful. But we'll go into more information about custom indicators later. For now, this is all you really need to know about the indicators and strategies box. So those are your indicator options. Let's move on to strategy scripts. So if I go to built in, any script that has this little red down arrow and green up arrow represents a strategy script. So if we click on one of these, it will open up the strategy backtesting system. So this is executing mock trades over historical data to give you an idea of how certain strategy rules would have performed on historical data. And now this is a very advanced feature. I'm not gonna go into too much information about this in this video, because again, it'll be far too long. Uh, but this is a great way to test various strategies. And depending what time frame you're on, it will change your backtesting results. And this is another very powerful feature of TradingView, the ability to backtest strategies automatically over historical price data. But we'll cover that in another video because it's far too complex for this video. So let's close the strategy tester window by clicking on the tab down here. And let's remove all of these indicators so that we're not overwhelmed by information here. And let's move on to the next interface feature, which is the fundamental metrics for stocks. So here is a list of various financial data that you can draw onto your chart to give you a reading on a stock's fundamentals. So for example, if you wanna see Apple's annual cash to debt uh, ratio, we can just click on this. And now down here, it is drawing onto our chart 0.93 and there are a lot of stock financials you can select from and so i'm not going to go over all of these in today's video either but that's how you would access them if you need to just by clicking on this little uh, little symbol up here next to the indicators box so next up we have the indicator templates button if you click on this you can save your indicators as a template so if i add on for example let's add the rsi on and the atr indicator on and let's change the look back on the RSI to seven and we'll leave the ATR as it is. But let's come up to this button now and click on this. If you click save indicator template, you can name your template. So let's call this RSI plus ATR. And if you click remember symbol, this will remember the symbol when you load the template next, it will load the symbol as well. And you can also remember the time frame you're on the interval, but we'll leave these off for now. If we click save, and we remove these indicators, then next time we want them back on our chart, we can just come up to this indicator templates button, click on that, click on our RSI plus ATR template, and there we go. It's back with our settings saved, seven period RSI and the ATR. So that one's pretty easy to use, but a very convenient feature of TradingView. So moving on, we have our alerts dialog. So here is where you would create trading alerts. So if you click on this, you will get a little options menu that will pop up that will allow you to select a trading script. This is where you would select your condition or script. So there are a lot of scripts out there that generate trading alerts to send to your phone or your email or to pop up on your charting platform. Uh, again, I've got a video on alerts, which I'll leave a link in the video description on how to create alerts and how, what all these different settings do. Uh, but this is where you come to create your alerts and adjust the settings. So here is a bunch of inbuilt conditions you can select from. So here we could say, is price crossing up above, let's say 360? And this alert now will trigger when price action is crossing above the price 360. And then you have a bunch of options here. You can notify a uh, push notification on the TradingView app. You can show pop-ups onto your chart. You can send yourself emails. You can use webhook URLs, which is used for 
uh, automated trading, sending data to URLs for third-party API and trade automation. Now, that's an extremely advanced topic. We're not definitely not going to go over that in this video, but TradingView does allow that functionality. And then we have other options. We can play a sound if we want to. There's a bunch of inbuilt sounds you can select from. And you can even SMS yourself using the email to SMS functionality here. And finally, we have our message. So you can send yourself uh, messages whenever an alert is triggered. So if you wanted to alert yourself whenever Apple crosses above 360, you could write here, Apple breakout. And then if you wanted to know what the current price of Apple is, you can use these little placeholders down here. So if I typed in close within two curly brackets, this will be replaced with the current closing price of Apple stock. So if you click on this little question mark here, there's a whole list of various uh, placeholder tags you can use in your alerts, uh, but I'll leave that for you to look into. This is very powerful and allows you to send indicator data to third-party APIs and that sort of thing, which is extremely helpful for trade automation, which is something that uh, deserves its own video to address. So we're not going to go into more information about that in this video, but this is how you would set your alerts when the time comes. And once you have a firm grasp on the TradingView platform, you'll be using this uh, functionality a lot. So moving on, we have the bar replay feature. Now this is another extremely powerful feature of TradingView. This allows you to load historical data and then play it forward using this little uh, backtesting tool here. You can either click play and the chart will automatically load a bar, one bar at a time. And you can use this for backtesting strategies manually. So if you have a particular trading setup or trading strategy you want to test, you can cycle through the bars one at a time until your rules are met. And then you can simulate how you would manage that trade through historical price action. So this is an extremely valuable tool that I've used a lot in my own trading career, especially in strategy development. And if you're brand new to trading, this can be a great way to practice just reading price action. And this bar replay tool can also be used to load more data onto your chart. So if I open up a Forex chart here and I drop down to the one hour chart and then I hold Alt and press G, that'll bring up the go to shortcut box. Now, if I just put in a really far back date, like the year 2000 here, and I click on the go to button, you can see that uh, TradingView can only load a certain amount of bars onto the chart at one time. And here we only go back to 31st of December, 2016. But if I wanna load more bars onto my chart, I can click on this bar replay tool click on this very first bar and it will load even more bars on my chart. So now if I do the same thing, you can see here that we are now going back all the way to 2013. And so that's another really useful application of this bar replay tool. So that is the bar replay tool. Uh, let's move on to undo and redo scroll. So here, if we wanted to say move our chart all the way over here, and then we wanted to quickly go back to where we just were, you can click on this little button here and it'll take you back there. If we want to go back to where we were a moment ago again, we just click on this and it'll take us back to where we just scrolled back to. So this is a great little tool that can speed up your analysis process. And there's also shortcut keys there. A lot of these uh, buttons that do have sh keyboard shortcuts, the keyboard shortcut will appear as a tool tip when you hover your mouse over it. So that's really convenient. So here you can press control Z and that will undo the scroll or press control Y and that will redo the scroll. And so that's a great way to hop between two points on your chart really quickly without having to click and drag all around your screen. And these also operate as just general undo and redo buttons. So if I were to just draw a line on my chart here and press control Z, that'll remove the line. And if I press control Y, it'll bring it back. So that covers the main toolbar here. Let's move on to our chart options. So here are our various chart options. So you can split your chart into two, two charts here. Depending on your trading view plan, you will only have access to a certain amount of these, but on the highest premium plan here, which I'm on, you can select up to eight individual charts drawn onto your chart window. And you can load as many uh, different markets as you want to here. So I could load pound dollar, the S&P 500, gold, uh, Bitcoin, whatever you want to load here. And you can customize all these charts. You can change the colors of them. So I could change these to bar charts. I could change this one to a line chart and I could change this to, uh, we could even change the, remove some of these settings here, uh, change the background color if we wanted to. 
there's a lot of customization options with your various chart types. And that's a huge strength of TradingView's platform. So each one of these charts is customizable, completely customizable and independent of each other. But if you wanted to, you could come here and click settings and then go apply to all. And that will change all of your charts to match the same settings you had on the chart you selected that from. So this is a fantastic feature for anyone who uses multiple timeframes or wants to analyze multiple markets on the one screen. And I use this every day on my kitchen charts. I have a computer set up in my kitchen with a screen that has a bunch of markets that I trade actively loaded onto the screen. And I can just monitor them all without needing to open up each chart individually at a glance, which is really, really powerful and uh, extremely helpful feature of the TradingView platform and a huge reason why it's so popular. And before we move on, there's a few other options here. You can sync your symbol to all the charts. So if I click that, we are now loading the Apple chart across all of our charts here. You can sync the interval. So if I were to change this to a daily chart and this to a weekly chart and this to a 50 range chart, I come up here and click interval. Whichever chart was selected, that will sync the interval across all of my charts. So let's go back to one hour here. And uh, you can also sync the crosshair. So if I turn that off, then the crosshair will only show up on the chart that I'm hovering over. If I turn that on, it'll show up across all of them. You can sync the time of your chart so that when you click on a single chart, others get scrolled to the same point on the axis. So if I turn that on and I click here, you can see that whenever I click the mouse, all of my charts are scrolled to that location, uh, which can be really helpful for analyzing multiple time frames. And lastly, you can sync your drawing tools. So if I reset this and reset this, and I draw a line here, let's change the color to red. You can see that that's actually syncing across all of my charts. So again, even if I go to a different time frame, that will still be synced onto my chart. So this is great for multiple time frame analysis in particular. So if we go to two charts here and I drop out to the daily chart, turn this back to a candlestick chart, reset this, reset this, change this to candles, and we say change this to a 15 minute chart. Let me just delete this line. And uh, first of all, let me turn off our interval sync. So now if we go to a daily chart on this top chart, and I draw in a support and resistance line. Now when I scroll out my 15 minute chart, you can see that higher time frame support and resistance line drawn right onto my chart. And then you can look for trading setups around those key levels by syncing your drawing tools across all of your charts and time frames. So that's it for syncing your symbols and intervals and crosshair time and drawings. And of course, there's many different ways you can apply this information. And I won't go into all of them in this video, but there's a quick crash course in how to change your settings for your chart displays. Let's go back to one chart, remove our drawing tool. If I hold control, you can click and drag to select any drawing tools. If I had multiple drawing tools here, I could click the cross option up here on the top left, hold control, select them all, and then press delete. They're all gone. And if I press control Z, they'll come back. And another way to remove them all is just to right click and click remove drawings. So there are multiple ways to achieve the same thing on your TradingView platform for most functionality. And it's just a matter of what you prefer in your own workflow. But we'll come back to drawing tools in a little bit. Let's move on to your chart properties. So here we are on the chart settings page. There's quite a lot of information in this settings menu, but we'll go over each thing one at a time just briefly. So this first option will change the color on your charts according to the previous close. So I believe this will change the color of the bar based on whether it closed higher or lower than the previous bars close. So you can see here that this bar closed bearish, but if we turn this on, it turns green because it closed higher than the previous day's closing price. So that's what that setting does. Then we have our body setting. You can change the color of your candles here if you wanted to change them to purple and uh, orange or whatever you want here. You can change the border colors as well. Uh, you can change the wick colors. And you have a lot of chart color customizations here, which is fantastic if you enjoy that sort of functionality. This, this is what makes TradingView so much fun to use and so modern. So if you don't like using red, say you want to use uh, black and white bars, it's really easy to set that up in uh, this settings menu here. 
Then we have the last value line. So you can see here that this is set to whatever the color of the candle is, but you can change this if you want to. We could change it to yellow, for example. And then our last price line is a different color to the candles on our chart. Next up, we have the previous close value line. And I'm not sure why that's grayed out, but normally if you turn that on, then you'll have two lines on your chart, one for the current closing price and one for the previous closing price. Then we have adjust data for dividends. So this is only relevant for stocks. Typically when a stock issues dividends, it affects the stock price on your chart, which can obviously affect your technical indicators. So if you wanna adjust your data for compensating for dividends, so that removes any price influence that the dividend payment has on the stock price, you can turn that on here. And that will help with certain technical indicators that are affected by that. Then we have extended hours. So if I go down to a 15 minute chart, and we come back up. There's two ways to get to the settings menu, by the way. You can right click and come down to settings, or you can just click on this little button up here. But if I turn this on, now we will get, depending on your trading view plan, your subscription plan, you will have access to uh, intraday, pre-market and aftermarket trading data. So this is after the market closed, Apple's price continued to be traded, and before the market opened the next day, Apple's price continued to be traded. And you can see that information here by turning that on in the settings menu. Next up, we have precision. So this is for your scale. If I set this to half, then we'll only get half points on our right price axis. And you have a lot of options here. Uh, you could extend your decimal places by a significant amount, or just leave it as a default, which will just show you the tradable price scale on your price axis. Next up, we have time zone. So by default, this is set to the exchange that the market is trading on, but you can change this to whatever you want. So for me, I live in Brisbane, so I'd look for it's UTC plus 10 Brisbane, click that. And you can see that that changes the time on my time axis to represent my time zone. So the US markets close for me at around 6 a.m. And so this final 15 minute bar is a 5.45 a.m. bar. But if I come back up to the settings and change that back to exchange, you can see that it's showing 3.45 p.m. down there. So that's how you would change your time zone. Now let me reset these two defaults. If you want to reset any of your chart settings, just come and click on this template option. You can save your chart settings as well if you want to by clicking there. Otherwise, just hit apply defaults and that'll reset your chart back to the default settings. So moving on to status line, this affects the text up here in the top left. So if I turn all of these off, I will have no information on my chart in the top left here. So that can really clean up your chart there. But if you want to have your symbol information there, you can click that. You can change that to just ticker. So if you leave description, it'll give you the full stock name. If you change it to ticker, it'll just give you the ticker code. Next up, we have the show open market status. I believe that's this little guy here. Uh, for some reason, when I turn that off, it's not doing anything, but maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyway, uh, this will show the open market status. Then we have open high, low close values. If I turn that on, we'll get our price data over whichever candle that I'm hovering my mouse over, whichever bar I hover my mouse over, my mouse crosshair. The data up here, the open, high, low, and close data will be for that candle. Next up, we have bar change values. So this will give you the point change and percentage change between each bar. So you can see there's a big gap up here. If I hold my mouse over that candle, we had a 11.83 point gap up and a 3.52% gap up. So that's useful for performing analysis. So that's what bar change values does. Then we have indicator titles. If I add an indicator to my chart, let's just use the RSI. I come up here, uh, you can see here, we have the RSI indicator title. If I turn that off, we lose the title down there. And same with indicator arguments. If I turn that on, it'll show me what settings I've set this RSI to. If I turn that off, I do not get that information there. So this is useful for decluttering your chart. If you don't change your indicator arguments very often, or you don't want to even see the title there. I'll leave them on for now. And then indicator values will just show you the value of the indicator wherever you are hovering your mouse. So similar to this open, high, low, close data at the top, whichever candle you hover your mouse over, it will show the indicator value next to the indicator title. Next up, we have the background of your status line. And I don't see that changing anything right now, but this I assume is the background color for your status line. Then finally, we have wrap text. So if your status line data gets too long, it'll wrap onto a new line. So that's it for the status line settings. Let's move over to scales. Now scales 
allows you to change the scale information on your chart. So here we can draw the symbol name straight to the axis. Then we have symbol last value label, and you can set this to value according to scale or price and percentage value. So this is telling you that this candle closed 0.49% higher than the previous candles open, I believe. That looks about right. So we'll change this back to value according to scale. And then you have symbol previous close value label for intraday prices only. So I'm guessing this is a previous day's closing price. Then we have indicator name label. So that will draw the indicator name on the scale down the right there. Then you can have the indicator last value as well on that scale. So if I turn that off, we're now getting the indicator's last value drawn straight onto the scale, which is convenient. Then we have financials name label and financials last value label. This is only applicable if you have financials drawing onto your chart. Then we have no overlapping labels. If you turn that off, then whenever a label overlaps, it will just draw over the top of another label. Whereas if you turn that on, then the labels will be separated from each other so that you can tell their values apart. Then we have the countdown to bar close. So if I go over to a market that's open, it's a weekend right now. So let's go to a Bitcoin market. If I open up the settings and we turn this off, you'll see the little countdown timer goes away there. And next up we have currency. So we can turn the currency on or off up on the top right there. That will tell you your quote currency or which currency you're trading in. So this is Bitcoin against the US dollar. So that's it for scales. Let's move on to appearance. Now this is a fun one. If I delete RSI, you get a lot of settings here and you can customize everything. The background color of your chart, for example, I believe there's like 16 million different colors you can choose from. And so that's a great feature of PineScript. It allows a lot of visual customization. Then we have your vertical grid lines. So if I change these to black, you'll see that these lines are drawing uh, both vertical grid lines and horizontal grid, li grid lines. So if you want to turn these grid lines off, you just open up this color setting and change the opacity to 0%. So now we only have horizontal lines drawing. And if I want to turn them off as well, we'll just set the opacity to 0% for that too. And now we have a chart with no horizontal or vertical lines on it. So let's turn those back on for now and move on to the next one, which is session breaks. So this will tell you the previous day's close. So this market opened down here at midnight, according to the exchange we're trading on. So if I come up to the settings menu here and we go to symbol and change time zone to UTC plus 10 Brisbane, you'll see that that was 10 a.m. my time. So at 10 a.m. my time, a new trading day starts for Bitcoin. So that's what the session breaks setting does. Then we have scales text. So you can change the size of the text on your scale if you want to. Um, you can also change the color of your scale text. You can change the color of the scale lines and you can also customize the crosshair color. So if I change that to red, we'll have a red crosshair. And finally, we have the watermark. So if I turn that on and we set the opacity to, let's go 100%. You can see in the background there, there is text telling us which market we are trading and what time frame. So that's what the watermark setting does. And you can just turn that on or off by clicking on here. Next up, we have navigation buttons. So if I set this to visible on mouse over, when we come down to the bottom here, we see we have our scroll buttons down here, our navigation buttons. We can zoom out the chart, zoom it in, or move left and right. And we can reset our chart by clicking there. If you want to turn that off, just set it to always invisible and now it's gone. And if you want it there all the time, set it to always visible. And there we go. So that's what that does. And it's the same for your pain buttons there. So I'll set these back to visible on mouse over. So before we move on, I'm just gonna reset all of my settings to the defaults, uh, just so we don't have all these wacky colors going on. And let's move on to the trading setting panel. So in order to show what these do, it's probably best that I create some positions to trade. So let's, if you come down here to the trading panel, this is where you can connect to real life brokers for real money trading. There's a number of brokers here. If you click the brokers page, you'll be taken to a page with a full list of the available brokers that are integrated with TradingView. For this example, I don't wanna lose any money showing you guys this stuff. So I'm just gonna to connect to my paper trading account through TradingView. This is a free account that comes with TradingView's service. So now this is the only market that's open right now because I'm recording this on a Saturday. So let's go to trade, create new order for Bitcoin and let's just create 10 contract position and let's buy it since it seems to be going up here. Now you can see if I open up the settings menu again, we go to trading. I can show you what all these settings do now. 
So if I hit show positions, that will remove my position from the actual chart. And in order to show orders, I need to add a take profit and stop loss. So let's do that now. Let's move our stop loss down in case it gets hit so I can continue this demonstration. And so now if I turn off show orders, our take profit and stop loss orders are going to disappear. So that's what this button does. Then we have our connecting line. This is just the line that connects them to our right axis. So if I change this to say 20%, that'll move these to the left by 20%. Leave that as 5%. And this, if we turn this on or off, will change whether or not these lines extend to the left. So if I turn them off, you can see these lines disappear from our chart. So these are some great options actually for customizing how you display your position information on here. So I'll leave them on for now. Next up we have show executions. So you can see this little blue arrow underneath this candle pointing up. That's showing that I executed a long position on this bar right here. So if I turn that off, that goes away. And these executions will stay on your chart through historical data so that you can quickly at a glance see where and when you entered or exited your trades. So that's a great feature there for reviewing your trading. Next up, we have play a sound on order execution. So if I turn that back on and we remove this position, I've actually got my chart muted right now, but that should have made a sound. So that's one way to manage your trades and, and have an audible response to your order execution so you know that it went through or failed to go through and whatever. Next up, we have instant orders placement. So by default, this is turned off. And when you go to say you want to enter a buy order above this little swing high in here, you could right click and go trade uh, buy stop. If you click that, then you need to fill out your information here in order for that order to go through. But if we come up to the settings menu and we turn this setting on, now when I go to trade and create a buy stop order, it will automatically just enter the order immediately. So that's what that's for. Let's go back up to the settings. Uh, show rejection notifications only will only show you uh, notifications when a order is rejected. Next up, we have the show buy sell panel. That's this thing down here. So I move this over. If I turn this off, that'll disappear. Turn it back on, comes back. So there's multiple ways to enter positions and manage your trades here. You can click this order panel button down here. You can use this buy sell panel down here, or you can right click trade, create new order. So there's three different ways to open that order menu. So you don't need this buy sell panel on your chart if you don't want to, but it's also an easy way to see the spread instantly. And you can change your position size here and that will affect your quantity before you enter the trade. So it's just a matter of preference there. And before we move on, I should show that you can undock this uh, window here so you can move your order execution panel around. And if you want to dock it again, just click on the little cog and click dock to right. And there's a bunch of settings here. You can uh, turn on or off the various display options here. So you can display your quantity only in percentage risk if you wanted to, and your stop loss and take profit only in terms of percentages. If you don't want to look at how much money you're risking and you just want to focus on taking good trades and managing your risk responsibly with the percentage amount, that's one way to achieve that. Just turn off the dollar amounts here and you will only ever see everything in terms of percentages of your account balance. So that's it for the trading panel and the trading settings. Let's move on to events. So if I go over to a stock market here, let's go back to Apple, go to daily. Uh, let's remove this buy sell panel, come down here to events. And now you can see down the bottom here, we have a couple of symbols. We have E and D. So E stands for earnings. If I click on this little symbol, we'll have our earnings data pop up here. And D stands for dividends. So this will tell you when dividends are due to be issued. So if I come up and open the settings again, this will only show economic events that affect the market you're trading. So if we go over to a currency, for example, let's go to the Australian dollar, open up the settings and untick this show only future events. Then this will show every event that ever happened, every fundamental event that ever happened. You can see there's quite a lot on this chart and that's why this setting is turned on by default. But here, if we zoom right in, you can see that there's a few events upcoming next week and we can see what they are just by clicking on them. So this is a really great trade management tool to stay on top of the markets. Obviously, you can use a, a third party external economic calendar to get this information, but it's great to have this stuff drawn directly onto your chart so that you always know what's coming up. And you can even draw in event break lines. So you can see now we've got visual lines on the chart 
representing the time that these events are going to happen. If we drop down to a four hour chart, it'll even show the exact time of day that the event is going to happen. So that's a really useful feature for staying on top of the markets and never being surprised by an economic release. And that's it for our chart settings. Let's move over to the rest of these buttons up here. First of all, we have this full screen button. So if you click that, it will exit full screen or enter full screen. Then we have this little camera button and there's a hotkey there, Alt S. If you press Alt S or click on this, then the TradingView platform will take a screenshot and now you can copy this link or you can click save image. You can right click save image or copy image and you have a copy of your chart analysis. And this will save any drawing tools you've done on your chart any technical analysis, and it will even draw in the upcoming events. And there's even a little tweet button here. So if you click on that, you can log into your Twitter account and tweet that information out to your followers if you have a social media presence. Moving on, we have the publish button. So this will allow you to share your idea with the trading community. So if I zoom out a bit and I draw in uh, some support and resistance lines here, I could say, you know, these are my key levels I'm looking at this week. If I hit publish, I can give the idea a title and a description. I can link to related ideas that are relevant to this analysis. Then I can tell traders whether I'm looking to go long or looking to go short. I can select a category for my analysis. I can tag the analysis. I can share the analysis to Twitter or stock twits. There's a bunch of options here. I could publish a public idea so that anyone can see this, or I can publish a private idea. So I need to send them the link in order to see this analysis that I've just done. And if we publish a public idea, then this will go up live on the TradingView public ideas library where a lot of traders share their analysis. So that's what the publish idea button does. You can even record a video idea, which is pretty cool. So here, if you want to, you can record a video up to 20 minutes in length and use your microphone to explain what you're looking at before you publish your video to the TradingView platform. It's a really cool feature. If you don't have your own third party uh, recording software, or you want to publish your video idea to the TradingView platform publicly. So that's what these two buttons do. And that's the top bar completed. So this video is extremely long. There's a lot to cover with TradingView, but we're about halfway through now. We've covered all of the major important settings. Let's move on to this right bar. We'll go all the way down to the bottom and then we'll move over to the drawings bar. And then finally, we'll go over these tabs at the bottom. So first of all, up here, we have our market watch list details and news. So if you click on this little button, it'll bring out our watch list. So this is my personal portfolio that I trade uh, the Forex markets with. And I have a few um, portfolios here that I can choose from. And you can rename them, create a new list, duplicate your lists, import lists even. So if you have a list on another platform, you can import it, you can export your list, you can select your list by color. So if I go green list, see that I've got this CAD Swiss uh, highlighted as green. If I click on that, and that will just show me any markets that I've tagged with a green flag. So that's a pretty cool feature there. So moving on, we have our alerts settings menu. So here uh, is a bunch of alerts that I've created and you can just right click on any of these alerts and you can edit them, change them, delete all inactive alerts if you want to. And here's our alerts log, which will give you a log of every alert that's been triggered. And if you click on the alert, it will bring you to the page and the time frame. Uh, the market and the time frame that the alert was set on, which is a really handy feature. Next up, we have the data window. So this just shows you the data of the market that you have loaded onto your chart. So if I add a, let's say an EMA onto my chart, let's just go do a double EMA. You can see that the indicator setting now shows up down the bottom here, and you can hide or show that indicator from this data window. So if I wanted to also add an RSI on here, we'll now get that information drawn into the data window as well. So this is a great little spot to get all of your data in one window. All right, now moving on to the hot lists. So this is list generated by the market scanner, the TradingView market scanner. And so you can see here, we've got US exchanges and we have volume gainers. We have percent uh, changes to the positive side. So these are the markets that have had uh, really strong days. Um, yeah, so this is a great, uh, spot to analyze your charts at a glance really quickly and see uh, how the markets have been performing. So this is a great way to isolate your portfolio or your watch list, especially if you're an intraday trader. Uh, here's a negative uh, gainers as well. So any market that had a bad day will be listed on this list here. 
And uh, the, these guys did not have a good day yesterday. Anyway, that's hot lists. Uh, that just shows you the biggest movers on the market currently. And you can save this as a watch list, actually. And there's a whole bunch of options here. A whole bunch from different exchanges. So if you want to see what the London Stock Exchange hot lists are, you just click on this little drop-down box. And here's a list of all the different parameters you can scan for. So you can look for the biggest gap gainers, for example. And that will identify any markets that had a big gap in price. So that's a really cool feature there. So next up, we have the calendar. So if I click on that, that'll bring up the economic calendar. And we have a list of all the upcoming economic data that are likely to move the global markets. And up here on the top right, we have the filter. So you can turn on or off certain countries. And there are a lot of options here. We're not going to go over all of these. Uh, but this is where you would change your economic calendar filters if you need to. And then this button here will just highlight the closest event that is pending. Next up, we have the ideas panel, my ideas. So this will list any uh, ideas that you've published. This is just an easy way to access your own ideas. Then we have public chats. So this is like a chat room for various markets. So here I'm in a group called Australian Traders. Now I've never really used this functionality, but there's a whole bunch of different chat rooms you can join and you can chat with other traders. That's why TradingView is referred to as a social trading platform. But of course, it's optional. You don't need to come in here if you don't want to. But if you do come in here, there's plenty of interesting conversations to, uh, to participate in if you don't mind being very distracted while you trade. So next up, we have private chats. That will just list any private, uh, private messages you have from other traders on the platform. I'm not going to open that up now because I don't want to give away uh, the usernames of everyone that follows me. But that's where you would access your private messages if you need to. Then we have the idea stream. So this will just show you ideas, uh, recent ideas from people that you follow in your trading profile. Next up, we have notifications. So this is just a quick and easy way to see all of the notifications that are relevant to you. And right now I don't have any because I've cleared out all my notifications to make this video. But if I did have any notifications here, that's where I could see them all at a glance. Next up, we have the order panel. We already went over that. That is where you get your order execution information. And before we move on, I did forget to mention that you can use uh, this little box here to adjust your risk based on your stop loss price. So if I wanted to have a stop loss here at 70 cents, I could just write in 70 cents. I could click sell up here. If I wanted to risk 1% of my account, I just leave that in there. If I wanted to risk two, change that to two. And TradingView automatically calculates my position size for me. So that's a really great feature of the order panel. But anyway, let's move on to the depth of market. So this will show you the depth of market for the market you're trading. If I go back to Bitcoin, which is actively being traded, it's not actually showing the DOM here. I'm not sure why there's no information here. Maybe it's not applicable to crypto or maybe you need to pay uh, extra money to access this information, this data. But if you do have access to this depth of market information, this is where you access it from. The next up, we have the object tree. So if I draw a bunch of uh, different things on here and make my chart look like a Bob Ross painting uh, and then we come and click on this this will list all of the different drawing tools and different analysis data that I have on my chart this is an object tree so we can delete each thing individually if I want to get rid of the pitch fan just remove it off there and I can remove the various drawing tools from this window here and then last but not least, we have the very important question mark help menu. So this is, uh, you can access this as well from going up here to help center. But this is where you get a lot of information on how to navigate the charting platform. And you can open support tickets if you need to by clicking up there. And that's it for the right bar interface. Let's move over to the drawing tools. And then this video guide is nearly finished. So now we have our drawing tools and uh, various technical analysis tools here. So if you click on this first little box here, you'll get a list of uh, options here. So if I click dot, that will change my cursor to a dot instead of a uh, cross. Uh, you can also change it to an arrow if you want to. So this is all just a matter of preference. And you can change to an eraser. So if I draw a, a drawing tool on there and I select eraser, I can now delete that tool just by clicking on it. Next up, we have our actual uh, line tools. And there are a lot of line tools here. I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, you can highlight your favorite tools here by clicking on this add to favorites. And once you do highlight any drawing tools and make them a favorite, you can come down to this little star icon down here, click on that, and that will open the drawing tool 
hotbar. So here's a list of all the most commonly used uh, drawing tools that I most commonly use in my own trading. And these are all tools that I've highlighted as a favorite. So you can turn that on or off by clicking on this little icon down here. So there are a bunch of options when it comes to drawing tools. For example, you've got a straight horizontal line that will extend all the way across your chart here. Uh, you've got this horizontal ray, which will only draw from where you click it. And if you double click on the drawing tool, you get a whole bunch of options here. So you have visibility options. You can change what time frames the tool shows up on. And this works on all drawing tools. So the drawing tool functionality on TradingView is quite advanced and one of its strongest features in terms of a technical analysis platform. Then you can change the coordinates. So I could change the bar that this begins on if I want to. You can even add text. So here I could change this to say resistance, uh, change it to red, put it in bold, change the size and change the text alignment to the top of the bar. And now we have text drawing on the line. And this is a really cool functionality of the platform because it even works on trend lines. So if I were to draw a trend line here and I change the text to say steep trend line, uh, and we put the text alignment to bottom, you can see it's now drawing text on the bottom of the uh, drawing tool. So that's a really cool feature that they recently added to the platform that really allows you to take your technical analysis to the next level in terms of attention to detail. So let's delete these and move on. So there's a whole bunch of drawing tools here for various lines, vertical line. The vertical line is helpful for seeing the date. You can see the date down here. So when I place the line there, if I change the color to white so we can see it, uh, we can actually see the date down on the bottom there. And you can also press Alt V to draw that as well, or Alt H to draw a horizontal line. There's a whole bunch of uh, key binds, which we'll go over at the very end of this video. But those are your various drawing tools in terms of lines. Uh, you can even draw parallel channels if you want. There's a lot of options here, which are really cool. Then we have our kind of complex drawing tools. So you've got your fib retracement here. If you want to draw out your Fibonacci's, uh, you have your fib extensions. Uh, so if you want to draw out any um, Fibonacci extensions here, you can use that tool there. Uh, we have really a lot of options. I'm not going to go over all of these. There's some pretty, pretty crazy ones as well, like fib circles. I'm not actually sure what that's used for, to be honest with you, but it looks pretty damn cool. I'll give it that. But there's just a lot of options, overwhelming amount of options, and it's all a matter of preference. If you don't know what some of these do, you don't have to use them. But if you do want to use them, here they are. Next up, we have our geometric shapes. So if you want to draw like a support and resistance box, you can draw that in here. If you want to draw uh, complex geometrics, like a curve, for example, uh, you can do that here. Uh, if you want to draw uh, just random sort of brush drawings on here, you can do that as well using the brush tool. So there's a lot of options here. You have text options, a whole bunch of text options, price labels. So uh, here that will actually draw the price that you've anchored this to. So if I move this around, you can see that it's actually showing uh, what the price is, where this little dot is on the price label. So there are a lot of options here. We have arrow up, arrow down. Uh, so a lot of drawing tool functionality here to choose from. We have text, obviously, which is a great uh, tool for technical analysis. So I could say this is a resistance zone and drag that up there. And there we go. Really easy. Let's remove all that. And let's move on. Next up, we have our advanced patterns. So this is a great tool if you're an advanced pattern trader and you have a whole bunch of options here. So if I want to draw an uh, X, A, B, C, D pattern, like a um, bat pattern or something like that, you can do your X to A, A to B, B to C, C, D completion and draw that right onto your chart. So let's see if we have any valid uh, advanced patterns here that we can draw out. Let's go down to a one hour chart, have a look around. So here's a valid bat pattern setting up. So we have our X to A, A to B, B to C, and a CD completion down at the 886 retracement. So here's a bullish bat pattern setting up, and that's how you would draw it out on your chart using the advanced pattern functionality. So I'm not going to go over all of these. Uh, you also have Elliott waves, and if you draw them out like that, uh, you can get your points drawn. Elliott wave points drawn directly on your chart. So a lot of really cool drawing tool functionality here. Next up, we have a bunch of other options here. We have our date range. So you can see how many bars are between a date range and days and how much time has passed between the two points. 
And then next up we have our long position tool and our short position tool. So these are really cool uh, tools that allow you to draw your profit and stop loss price directly onto the chart and TradingView will uh, give you the information you need in order to enter your positions or just monitor the trade. So for example, if we wanted to enter this uh, advanced pattern down here, down at this 886 retracement, if I draw this out and I put our decompletion down here, first of all, there's a whole bunch of drawing options. If you double click on any drawing tool, you'll get a whole bunch of options you can choose from. And some of these tools, such as a Fibonacci tool, have a lot of unique options here. So if I go extend lines right, now we have our Fibonacci lines drawing all the way across the chart. I could draw a long position tool right on this decompletion. I could have my stop loss uh, just below the X leg, my target, uh, let's say at a 382 retracement from the high of the pattern. That would put me right here. So that's a two to one trade. You can delete these. And now there's our position tool ready to enter a trade if price gets down there. So one of the coolest features of these drawing tools is that if I right click this, and I click on create limit order, that will create a limit order with this data filled out for me. So my limit price is at 8979.87, which is at the uh, little horizontal line down here, this gray line, the entry point of this long position tool. My stop loss is down here at 8862.65. That's all filled out for me. All I need to do here is just change my, my risk per trade. And now if I hit buy, I have my limit orders set according to this uh, long position tool. So that's a really great feature that makes trading through TradingView a real pleasure. So let me delete all this, uh, delete all the drawing tools. And that's it really. Then we have a whole bunch of symbols here. I'm not gonna go over all of these uh, because they're not really relevant. But if you wanna draw some wacky symbols on your chart, uh, you can using this uh, symbol drawing tool, this icon drawing tool list. And there's a lot here to choose from. Uh, moving on, we have our ruler tool. So this will allow you to measure uh, between two points on your chart. So it'll tell you how many bars between the uh, horizontal axis and how much price difference between the vertical axis. So for example, from the low here all the way to the high, we have 21 bars, 21 hours, uh, 699 points of price difference and a 7.86% gain from the low to the high. So that's a really cool tool for analysis. Then we have our little uh, zoom in button. So you can, uh, if I reset the chart and I use this, you can use this to zoom in on a section of your chart. So that's a really cool feature there. Uh, and you click the zoom out button to reset your chart back to normal zoom. Next up, we have the uh, magnet mode, which will snap drawings placed near price bars to the closest price value. So your open, high, low, and close. So if I turn that on, and then I go to draw a trend line, you can see that this is snapping to the nearest price that I hover my mouse near. So if I wanted to uh, snap it all the way up here to let's go to this high. And so if I wanted to draw support and resistance, you can turn on that snap functionality and just hover your mouse right near the high or the low. And there you have it. And then after that, we have the stay in drawing mode. So this is really handy if you're drawing out like a trend analysis or something. So if I zoom my chart out a bit here and I turn on the drawing tool and I uh, lock my drawing mode, I can draw as many lines as I want to without losing the drawing tool functionality. If I turn that off, then every time I draw a line, the line tool will deselect. So that's a really cool way to stay in drawing mode when you're performing uh, complex analysis. And next up we have lock all drawing tools. So if I draw on a bunch of tools here and I lock this, now if I try to move them, I can't. And it just moves the chart around. So that's great if I turn that off, when I click and drag on this tool, I can move it around. And if you don't want that to happen, just click lock all drawing tools and that will lock them in place. You can also uh, lock drawing tools individually by right clicking on the tool and clicking lock. And so now if I draw another line, I can move this line around, but I can't move this line around because it's locked until I right click on it and go unlock, I cannot move it. And then finally, we also have our hide drawing tools. So if I have a bunch of drawing tools on here and I click that, that will hide them from my chart temporarily. If I want to turn them back on, I just click on that button and they come back. And if I want to delete them all, then I have this little bin button down here and that will just remove all of the drawing tools off my chart. And that is it for the drawing tools section.
So moving on, we're nearly done. Let's look at these tabs down the bottom here. So the first one is our stock screener. If I click on that, it'll bring up the stock screener interface. And I'm not gonna go over all of this information because this deserves its own lesson entirely. And I personally specialize in Forex trading, so I don't use this very much myself, to be honest. But if you want to analyze the stock market overall to filter out certain stocks based on certain data, you can do so here on the stock screener. So you have a whole bunch of options here and a heap of presets. If you click on filters, uh, here is a whole list of filters you can choose from. And this is quite a powerful tool. There's a lot of options here, significant amount of options. And so the world is your oyster when it comes to analyzing the entire stock market. If you want to analyze other markets, just click on this little uh, flag icon up here and select which stock market or country you'd like to analyze. So that's the stock screener. And I won't go into more detail here because we'll be here all day if I do. Uh, but moving on to text notes, this is a place to add notes about your own trading. So here you can change the title of the note and the text of the note. And this is just a place to keep notes on your trading or your technical analysis. Um, you could have a trading journal here or something if you wanted to. And it's just a very, very basic uh, note functionality. Next up, we have the Pine Editor. Now this is where you would write your own scripts or edit existing scripts to run on the TradingView platform. And I'm definitely not going to go into a lot of information about this section because I have an entire course on Pine scripting that goes for nearly a full day worth of recorded material. And even then, I've only barely scratched the surface of what's possible with the PineScript language. But if you do want to edit any scripts, this is where you would do it. And if you want to learn about PineScript, head over to pinescriptmastery.com. I have a free basics course there, which will teach you the absolute core basics of PineScript and what all this code means. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you head over there and check that out because I just do not have time to go over uh, PineScript in this lesson. So moving on, we have the strategy tester. Now, this is used for testing strategies over historical data. So if I just quickly add on a strategy script that I've been working on myself, uh, such as this one here, you'll see that it will load a bunch of data onto my chart and it's entering and exiting mock trades on historical data and then recording the information into the strategy tester. So this is a great way to see if certain rules-based strategies are profitable by automatically backtesting them. And again, I'm not going to go over this information because I have a whole course on this over at pinescriptmastery.com that goes into significant amount of detail. And there's just so much to cover with this. I can't cover this uh, information in this video because otherwise it's going to be far too long. But if you do need to access the strategy tester, this is where you would do it. And then next up, we have the trading panel. So if I click on this, this will list all of your trading data. If you're signed into a paper trading account, it will show you your paper trading account. If you're signed into a real account, such as Oanda, or TradeStation or FXCM, then you will get your real trading data in here. And you can manage your trades directly through the TradingView platform. So again, if I go to trade, create new order, and we just buy Bitcoin right now at market, you can see I have a new order down here. If I click on this little edit icon, I can adjust my stop loss and my target if I want to. I can do all of that from the trade panel. And so that's it for these tabs down the bottom. Let's cover TradingView's uh, hotkeys, and then I'll end this video. So if you come down here and click on this little question mark icon, this help center, and then you scroll to the very bottom of this menu, we have our keyboard shortcuts. So if you click on this, this will bring up the list of shortcuts for various parts of the platform. So if you wanna look at your chart shortcuts, just click on this little drop down box here, and there's a whole bunch of key binds to memorize here. Now you can't customize these key binds, but you can see a list of them here. And there's a whole bunch of options here. Moving on, we have drawing tools. So for example, to use a measure tool really uh, quickly, you can just hold shift and click on the chart and that will bring up the measure tool. And there's a few drawing tool options here. Like I showed you earlier, Alt V will draw a vertical line. Alt C will do a cross line and Alt H will do a horizontal line and Alt T will draw a trend line. Then we have the watch list and screener keybinds. There's a few here to learn if you use those a lot. And then next up we have the Pine Editor. So there's a whole bunch of keybinds for the Pine Editor that can really speed up your workflow and make your coding a lot more efficient. Uh, finally, we have the trading hotkeys. So Shift B will create a market order to buy. Shift S will create a market order to sell. And to use the depth of market 
interface to place your limit orders. You can just click on the cell itself or press control and then click in order to place a stop order at a certain price. So that's it for the trading platform itself. Let's go and have a quick look at the TradingView homepage. So here on the front page, we have a market summary and a few ideas that people have published uh, sharing their analysis. This is a great place to come, particularly if you're a new trader. If you're an experienced trader, you'll probably rarely visit this page because you'll have everything important to your trading process bookmarked. And most experienced traders would never look at any of the ideas on here. Maybe you would come and check out the scripts. If you click on this scripts navigation bar, you can get a whole list of different script categories. And if you scroll through them, you can find some pretty cool stuff on here. So these are all scripts written by traders that use the TradingView platform. And all of these scripts are written in PineScript. And you can find all sorts of customized indicators here and some strategy scripts as well. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to try out some other people's work. And then we also have this ideas page. So if you click on this, this will bring you to the list of ideas published by other traders on the platform. If you're a beginner trader, I would recommend being cautious with this stuff because no one knows where the market's headed. And all of this is just opinions. And someone's drawn a cute little boat here. So I'm sure this is very, very valuable technical analysis. But just take it with a grain of salt. And here, CAD yen to fall, Aussie dollar to rise. Uh, yeah, we'll see about that. But anyway, uh, next up we have markets. So if you come to the markets tab, this is pretty cool. You can find the crypto screener. So if you click on that. This works like the stock screener that I showed you early in the video. And so if you come up to filters, there's a whole bunch of different uh, parameters that you can search through the entire crypto markets for. But I'll leave this for you to experiment with. Uh, next up, we also have a Forex, uh, Forex screener. Here it is. And this behaves the same way as the stock screener and the crypto scanner. Uh, next up we have streams this is a new feature that was just added to the platform where you can watch people perform their uh, analysis live on the platform it's kind of like twitch for traders uh, next up we have brokers so there's a list of integrated brokers that have partnered with TradingView uh, to provide their service through the TradingView platform so if you want to trade directly through TradingView um, your list will be different to mine depending on what country you're from uh, then there's a bunch of other things here. I'm not going to go over, over everything here. Uh, probably one of the most useful things on this list is the help center and the blog and news. So you get a lot of information from the blog page here. Anything uh, important or significant that has changed with the platform will be explained here on the blog. And that concludes my comprehensive guide to the TradingView platform. If you want more information about trading or PineScript, or you want to check out some of my indicators, head over to zenintheartoftrading.com. And here you'll find a list of all of my uh, publicly released indicators, including the source code to them, if that strikes your interest. So thanks for watching, everyone. Good luck with your trading. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.